So just recently, Starfield seems to have undergone a barrage of negative reviews over on Steam, with it now sitting at mostly negative. And this is a little bit of a concerning factor, although there is a few theories roaming around the gaming community right now as to why that may be. And even though this game is on Game Pass and is having its mostly negative reviews, we're going to talk about how Starfield is amongst the highest earning Steam games on the platform. There is so much going on inside of Starfield as of right now, and we're going to dive on into it today. What is going on, guys? My name is CloudPlays, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today, we have got so much to go through, but before we do, if you'd be so kind to hit that beautiful thumbs up, it would be absolutely incredible. It helps me out a ton and lets me know that I'm doing things right. Also, if you could subscribe with post notifications turned on to make sure you stay on top of all gaming news and check out our sponsor, Advanced GG, the number one clinically proven energy supplement on the market. Market. My favorite flavor is cherry vanilla, but you guys can catch an array of flavors via the link in the description. So with that being said, let's dive on into some Starfield news. Starting with how Starfield is amongst the highest earning Steam games despite its mostly negative reviews and Game Pass earning point. So Starfield has managed to secure a prominent position in the Steam's lucrative best of 2023 promotion. Despite facing challenges such as negative user reviews and a decline in sentiment, the games available through Game Pass subscriptions initially captivated players with its expansive universe upon its launch in September, encouraging them to craft their own narratives within its vast cosmic settings. Now, however, though, the recent criticism has led to a shift in perception with the title receiving predominantly negative reviews on Steam and some modders expressing reluctant moves to create mods for what they consider a boring game. Now, despite these setbacks, Starfield has defeated defied expectations by claiming a place in the platinum level of Steam's highest earning games of the year, ranking amongst the top 12. This achievement is surprising for several reasons. First, the prevailing negative sentiment would typically hinder sales given the relevance on positive word of mouth for continued success. Additionally, the game's availability on Game Pass, allowing subscribers to play without an extra cost, could have been expected to impact Steam sales significantly. However, it appears that the considerable number of PC players preferred owning the game outright rather than subscribing to Game Pass. Another contributing factor is Bethesda's decision to sell the game at a premium during an early access period, a week before it became available on Game Pass, and this strategy may have attracted players who wanted the experience of the game before its inclusion on Microsoft's subscription service. Now, despite the current challenges and negative perceptions, there remains a strong interest in Starfield evidence into the high sales figures with continued support and contributions from the modern community, there is hope that the game will enjoy a lasting legacy as akin to the other Bethesda titles like Skyrim and Fallout 4. This is amongst a absolutely ridiculous ridiculous motion that we are going to be taking into the 2024 year for gaming as a society. We find that people's expectations inside of games are just ridiculously too high that or they misread the way that these are being played out or the marketing strategies inside of these games are not pushed in the correct manner. This leads to a subjective point of view when it comes to the gaming community, meaning that most games nowadays will not meet the standards of the average consumer. But apparently this one did surpass the numbers that we expected with the top 12 spot inside of Steam's sales records. This seems to be a little bit of a contradictive term. Now, there are a few theories for Starfield's sudden surge of negative reviews, and via an article on Forbes, there does seem to be some great ones right here. The guys over at Forbes, specifically Paul Tassi, has written up an article that states the following. Starfield was the most Googled game of 2023, and I understand why. I've not seen any game spark more conversation on this website than Starfield, including including even other controversial titles such as Hogwarts Legacy or hugely phasing offerings like Baldur's Gate. It seems that we will never be free of it and now people are talking about a new development. Starfield now has mostly negative reviews on Steam for the last 30 days, a drop from the also not ideal mixed reviews previously, but it has 87,519 all-time reviews right now, making the mixed status. But the 7,594 
recent reviews are mostly negative. Why? Why the sudden drop in review scores from players two months after launch? I think there are three main reasons here and none of them are haters are review bombing. I think there are legitimate things to examine here and I don't understand this development at first myself either. Now he goes on to state three individual topics that are all quite well put but the first one stating off is the game is long and people are just now finishing it. Now while two months seems like a long period of time it is actually not that long in the Starfield's timeline. This is a game that you can easily put 60, 100, 150 hours into given its sprawling size and for people who do not play video games for a living like me you can understand how the might easily take two months to get that far in the game. I can buy the idea that you can play the game for that long and end up with an overall negative view if you believe that ultimately it becomes too shallow or discover is promised new game plus loops are not that interesting. This was the biggest problem inside of the game for Paul Tassi at Forbes even liking most other things. Now there is a chunk of time between 15 and 40 hours where you really get into the flow of the game but long tail. You may run out of stuff to do and it's a lot of shooting through clone stamped bases on largely empty planets so if you do end your time petering off and doing that or starting over in a non-satisfying starborn loop I can see why the negative reviews would start now. Now the second part is non-game pass players are finally picking it up. Now another theory is that makes sense and can add to the above is that we have gotten past the initial surge of those who were a super interested in the game from the start and b jumping into it from the xbox game pass ecosystem where you have to buy the game on steam and after holiday sales where it was and still is cheaper on the platform that may change things. If you picked up Starfield for free on Game Pass, that's a different context than someone being a on the fence, picking it up and deciding pretty quickly, yeah, I don't like this. Different crowd, different kind of dollar investment. And again, I can see more negative reviews being added in that way. And finally, and I'm going to be part of the problem here, content creator videos. Now, this may sound like an insult to the masses, but I sort of understand it. There have been a number of high profile videos released as retrospectives about Starfield, including an eight hour examination by Bartrician TV and a widely shared video by Nakey Jakey that has amassed 4.2 million views in two weeks. Both hugely critical of Starfield and its dated Bethesda game style design. Now, Paul Tassi states right here, I didn't quite get this as what do people see these videos, hear it's bad, and then go and buy the game and review it poorly. But I do think watching these well-made critical videos can cause reflection on those that have already not purchased it. Even as someone who liked the game, I found myself watching Nakey Jakey's video and agreeing with much of what he said. No, not enough to go and retroactively change my review score, but uh, it's post bad or Steam review. And I do sort of get why the critic pointing out flaws in an intelligent way could spark some action like that. And I completely, completely agree. But I think that this game is one of those games that you just kind of have to play it yourself and make your own perspective on it. Me myself, I do quite enjoy the game. It's not a game that I'm going to be playing for months and months to come, but I am enjoying the game in dribs and drabs and something that I can go back to. My dad, Popper Cloud, really, really enjoys the game a lot. It really piques his interest inside of the shipbuilding system and the outpost systems and farming for resources and searching for new weapons. And they're the things that he enjoys doing and the game is absolutely ideal for him. But You've got to ask yourself a question and one that Timely Arrival 6769 did ask on Reddit. If you dislike the game, why are you still here? And that is a solid point. There are a lot of reviews online that have had hundreds of hours of play and then slate the game afterwards. It's a little bit baffling, but he states right here, genuinely curious why you still come to the sub if you don't play or like the game. I ask because I do. Starfield's probably the most disappointing release ever for me. A guy who just got Skyrim poster for Christmas. For me, to be honest, there's a few reasons. I find the car crash release of Starfield very entertaining. There always seems to be some sort of interesting news, like Emil going on a rant, the player count dropping or it failing into a mixed review base. He also states here that I live in hope that we'll get a big update like Cyberpunk and want to be kept updated on new stuff added or coming soon. I don't want others on the fence about buying the game to waste their money without knowing 
what the game actually is and I like reading what about others opinions on the game why they like it why they don't and what needs to be added what about you now I do think that this is a solid point as well if you do not like the game why is it that we're still in a basis of people going in and going into subreddits or going on to videos and I've had a few comments myself over most recent videos stating that the game is absolutely trash and yet they still persist on watching the videos or jumping into the subreddit or making a comment or I don't really understand how you manage to get there if you don't enjoy the game and you don't want to see the game do well in the future that's just my personal opinion I think this game's got a lot of room to grow do I think it's like a grade right now absolutely not it's got so much that it could rectify and so many things that it needs to fix but it has got potential over years to come a lot like cyberpunk did have and is now at is that okay? Definitely not. We've addressed this in a thousand different videos in the past. They should have definitely put it out in the way that it should have been, but they haven't. And I think that that's just where we're at right now. The game is okay. It's not amazing. And that's just how I look at it. Let me know what your guys' opinions are down in the comment section below. It'd be absolutely amazing to know what you guys think of Starfield. And if you don't like it, what made you click on this video? I'm really intrigued. Let me know via the comment section below. And if you have got this fire in the video, then let me know that you did by sticking a little spaceship or a little rocket emoji down in the comment section. Thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate all your faces. But as always, up until the next time, I'll see you in the clouds.